Hello and welcome to Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, the show where all you need is a dream, plus the answer to a few questions, of course, and then we can make your dream become a reality. Already realising a few dreams of her own is Maxine Morris from Huddersfield in West Yorkshire. Uh, she returns from last time. She works in human resources at a teaching hospital in Leeds. Uh, back home, waiting, our husband Paul and her three sons, 16-year-old Sam and 8-year-old twins Ben and Jack. So her mate Christine has come along once again to sit up there in the supporter seat. She's the one who's been helping Maxine tick things off her things to do to prove I'm more than just a mum list. That's right. And actually coming here and getting on the show and getting in the chair is one of the things on your list, isn't it? It is, yes, yes. Next on your list, piano lessons. Yes, that's next. Can you play at all? No, I can't. I can just about read music, but that's as far as it goes. And you're confident that in quite a short space of time you can learn to play piano? There are no time limits on my list. I can, I can take as long as I like. And also take your kids to Lapland. Oh, yes. Which yes. is great, actually. We might that. even do that this year. Yeah, stunning. OK. You said, last time you were on, you said, my main reason to be here is to do something so daft it absolutely terrifies my husband watching. Yes. <laughs> and I'll do that between 75,000 and 150 when I get there. <laughs> Maxine, I don't know how to break this to you. You've got five <laughs> grand and one lifeline left. <laughs> I'll give it my best shot. Well, I'd love you to. I'd love you to. Right, at the end of the last show, Maxine had already climbed to a respectable £5,000. She has one lifeline still on you. She can still go 50-50. So let's find out how much farther can that take her. Lots of luck, Maxine. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Right, serious business. You want to frighten him to death between 75 and 150,000. I do. You've got five grand. Question number five, you can double your money up to 10,000 pounds. Here it comes. What name did Mylene Class give to her daughter, born in 2007? Do you know this? No. Oh. <laughs> I don't know, you just had a look on your face like you were all excited. OK, let's have a look. Lana. Ava. Rita. Marilyn. I was hoping that when the answers came up, that I would have some level of clarity about it. But I am going to have to use that 50-50, I think. Right. Computer, take away two random wrong answers. Leave Maxine the right answer and the one remaining wrong answer. Now, what's that done? Now, that has thrown me into turmoil. Turmoil? That has thrown me into turmoil. <laughs> Because Ava was the one that I thought most likely when they first came up. Right. I thought Rita was one of the unlikely ones. So now I'm sitting here with a trip to Disneyland in the bank. Yes. Or gambling. You've got five grand. It's worth 10,000. You would lose 4,000 pounds here if you gave me a wrong answer. You go back to 1,000. I am going to play it. And I'm going to say B, Ava. You haven't a clue. I know. I know. <laughs> what name did Mylene Class give to her daughter born in 2007? Ava or Rita? You got £5,000. Right. Ava, final answer. Gulp. Why would you call a child Ava Class? Oh, don't, please. No, but why would you? Because it's better than Rita Class. <laughs> I hope. You think you're right? No, I don't at the moment. You are? Oh. You've just won £10,000. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You actually called Ava Bailey. Right. Now I know. Now you know. You got ten grand. You can walk away with ten thousand pounds, which is still a pretty good couple of nights' work. It certainly is. Yeah. But you haven't really had a chance to frighten the hell out of your husband. I bet that just frightened him. Frightened me, sitting here. Um, <laughs> okay. You got ten grand. 
have a look at question number six. You would lose £9,000 at this point if you gave me a wrong answer. You do not have to play this question. You could double your money. Here it comes. The US Department of Defense HQ in the Pentagon is based where? Arlington, Virginia, Louisville, Kentucky, Pensacola, Florida, Cambridge, Massachusetts, for £20,000. Hmm. I'm trying to think back to the Twin Towers now and the and the worry that there was at that time around the Pentagon being a target as well. I don't think it's Massachusetts. Why not? I don't know. I don't know why not. I just okay. don't know why not. I also don't think it's Kentucky. But again, I'm not sure why I don't think that. Florida's the one that's jumping up at me at the minute. But really. I'm not sure enough to, to gamble Disney And Lapland. And Lapland. The US Department of Defense HQ in the Pentagon is based where? Arlington, Virginia, Louisville, Kentucky, Pensacola, Florida, Cambridge, Massachusetts. One of those is worth £20,000. No, I don't think I'm going to get there. I'm going to say thank you very much and I'll take the money. Sure. I'm absolutely sure. Final answer. Final, final answer. OK, give her a big hand. Maxine goes away. <laughs> Having done just enough to terrify the old man <laughs> with £10,000. <laughs> and just before you go... Yeah. Now, go on, you know you want to know. I do want to just know. Just before you go, if it had been, like, you know, for free or whatever, what would you have gone for? Florida. Really? Yeah. If you'd gone, if you'd just been a little... Because you were quite gutsy on the last show and you've been gutsy here tonight. If you'd just been that little bit braver and gone for Florida, you would no longer have £10,000. Yeah. you just lost nine grand. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> the right answer is Arlington, Virginia. <laughs> Give her a big hand. She goes away with £10,000. We'll take a break. We have ten new contestants. We cannot wait to get into that chair. Don't go away. Welcome back to the second part of tonight. Who wants to be a millionaire? Well, we've got ten nicely turned out new contestants with their own plans for that elusive million. All of them got a place on the show by attending one of our recent nationwide auditions. Let's meet them. They are... Donna Verdon from West Sussex. Marion Cooper from Surrey. Peter White from London. Chris Scholes from County Tyrone. Christine Taylor from Essex. John Harcourt from Kent. Debbie White from Nottinghamshire. Richard Fleming from Ayrshire. Donna Higgins from North Lanarkshire. And Gaynor Taffarelli from County Durham. They're a worry tonight, aren't they? <laughs> Fastest finger first. Time to find out which of our top ten will be first to go head-to-head -head with the millionaire computer over there. We've got one question. It's got four answers, but only one correct order. Let's find out who can punch in that correct order in the shortest possible time. No distraction from the audience, as always at this point. They need to concentrate. Right. Here comes their first question. Starting in California and working east, put these famous music venues in geographical order. Royal Albert Hall, Sydney Opera House, Hollywood Bowl, La Scala, Milan. One or two of them looking very pleased with themselves. One or two looking absolutely horrified. Um, right, this is the right order. 
It's fairly straightforward thing about it. Hollywood Bowl. California, so going east, Royal Albert Hall as you come across the Atlantic to the UK, then down to La Scala in Milan in Italy, and then way down to the Southern Hemisphere, Sydney Opera House. So that's the right order. Now, out of ten, how many got it right? I think most of them. Let's have a look. No, not that many. Who was fastest? John Harcourt in 3.66 seconds. There you are, John. You see, it was really worth coming now. Good wave at the top, by the way. What was that? Something what are you doing? Different. Oh, no. Yeah. Now, do you want a million quid? Love to. Yes. Good man. <laughs> now we have John Harcourt from Gravesend in Kent. John officially retired from the police force in the year 2000 after 30 years of service. But he still works part time with the boys in blue. Uh, now as a civilian police training officer. Many years ago, John fancied a female police colleague and managed to get invited back to her place for coffee, <laughs> only to be confronted by a huge bruiser of a fiancé. Her landlady proved to be very nice, though. She was called Liz, and she and John are still married 33 years later. Oh. <laughs> I knew you'd all do that. You little devil. They have three grown-up kids and a baby granddaughter called Katie. But it gets more complicated. It's his son's mother-in-law, Beverly, who's come along to support John this evening. John loves the luxury life on cruiser ships, uh, and a decent win on the show would mean that he and Liz could afford that ultimate once-in-a-lifetime world cruise. Right, fingers crossed. As ever, a million pounds is just there for the taking in exchange for 12 questions, which all have the answers up on the screen. And all John has to do is choose the right ones. <laughs> there are no trick questions. There are three lifelines to help. There's 50 50. You can phone a friend and you can ask this fine audience. John, lots of luck. Let's play. Who wants to be a millionaire? So, lots to talk about. But let's get you some money first. Question number one is for £500. Here it comes. What name is given to a keeper of a park, a forest, or area of countryside? Roma. Rover. Rambler, Ranger. That would be Ranger, Chris. You have £500, John Harcourt. <laughs> right, last point at which you could go home with nothing. I'm sure it won't happen. You have three lifelines. You probably won't need them. Question number two will guarantee you £1,000. Here it comes. The White Cliffs of Dover mainly consist of which substance? Basalt. Chalk, granite, marble. I'd be in real trouble if I got this wrong. I'm going to go for chalk. Because you come from Gravesend in Kent. Yes. yes. It's the right answer. You have £1,000. <laughs> How are you doing? Very well, Chris. Nice to be here. Lots. Nice to have you, John. Thank you. Um, thousand pounds, you're doing all right. What was your goal? Everybody does it. It's no point saying, oh, yeah. no, I don't mind. But everybody, before they leave, they go, oh, if I could get to 10 grand, 20 grand, 50 grand, what would you do? Millionaire's the show I've always wanted to be on. I'm absolutely made up to be here. And now I've got a thousand pounds. That's brilliant. Anything over that is a bonus. I, I guess most of the, cont the other nine guys sitting in the, in the uh, seats there are, are sort of all looking. And we all dream about a million. But sensibly, I'd like 50, 50,000. This be enough for your world cruise with your wife? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That would be a serious that, cruise. That would be a serious... Yeah. yeah. That would be a yeah, never-come-back cruise, cruise ten think, times. Yeah. All sorts of things about you. You used to look like Jimi Hendrix. He was a hero of mine back in the, in the 60s, and, yeah. which I think was a really good era uh, to, to grow up in. Mm -hmm. Just loved his music. Um, when, I, when I first heard him play, and I've actually been lucky enough to actually see him play live as well, it just blows you away. But you used to look like him. Well, I mean, I had the haircut and the, oh, did you? Yeah, and the full, Mex uh, full moustache and everything like that uh, as well in the late 60s. And I think my, my parents gave up on me uh, at that <laughs> point. But uh, strangely, I think I must have lived my life in reverse because I actually dropped in and I joined the police force. Yeah. That, which I mean, you were basically a young hippie, weren't you? Absolutely, yeah. And you then spent 30 years as a policeman. Yeah. Do you look back on that with great pleasure or do you think, phew, that was a bit rough? Or... Well, the police service? Yeah. In general, great pleasure. I can't, I can't believe the 30 years went so quick. Uh, you have your bad side and you have your good as well. And, and like everybody else, your life goes in peaks and troughs. 
but generally, um, the police force has been good to me. I enjoyed the job. I met some really, really nice people. Seen some bad things as well, but by and large, loved every minute of it. OK. You want to try and get up to um, £50,000. We can chat as we go. But you've got you. all three lifelines untouched. Thank you. You're guaranteed £1,000. Have a look at question number three. This is for 2000 Here we go. Harvest is a species of which animal? Squirrel, mouse, beaver, mole. Play on this one, Chris. It's B, mouse. Final answer? Final answer. It's the right answer. You've got £2,000. <laughs> Question number four is for 5,000. You still haven't touched any lifelines. Have a look. Aquitaine is a region of which country? Belgium, France, Germany, Netherlands. I know what it used to be in the Middle Ages, because there was a queen that came from it that married an English king. I'm trying to make sure it hasn't been real. Major. I'll play on Chris, it's uh, B, France. Final answer. Final answer. It's the right answer, you've got 5,000. <laughs> you have 5,000 pounds, you're flying. Fingers crossed. You have three lifelines, you're three away from 50,000. Question number five. You could double your money to 10,000 pounds, here it comes. Which pop singer married actor Nick Cannon in 2008? Mariah Carey, Duffy, Celine Dion, Britney Spears. And here comes the modern pop music question that I was fearing. Not your era then? Uh, You're more 60s. More 60s and 70s. Um, I think I'm going to uh, crave the indulgence of this lovely audience, please. If Let's like. crave the indulgence of this lovely audience. OK. Right, audience, first time John's needed any sort of lifeline, this is the question. It's getting serious. First one he's needed and it's worth £10,000. Which pop singer married actor Nick Cannon in 2008? Look at their little faces. Mariah Carey, Duffy... Celine Dion or Britney Spears? A, B, C or D, it's for £10,000, all vote now. <laughs> 53% say Mariah Carey, 24% uh, Duffy, 4% Celine Dion, 19% Britney Spears. It's not huge, but it is a majority. What are you thinking, John? I'm thinking that more than half is, is quite reassuring, although 24% for Duffy mm. and 19% for Britney Spears, so it's, it's, it's split. Uh, like Either people like, no, or they don't know, and they're guessing. And I'm just wondering whether I need to sort of use another lifeline. I'm also thinking 50-50 wouldn't do me a lot of good because I plain don't know, so it would be a guess if I did it. And I'm just trying to get my head round if any of my phone of friends would know as well, so I'm not too sure about that. So on the basis that I'm not sure about using the other lifelines, I'm going to go with the audience on. I'm going to take Mariah Carey. Final answer. Yeah, final answer. <laughs> You know, once it goes to orange, you can't change your mind. Yeah. You just won £10,000. <laughs> OK, it was a gamble. It was a good gamble, 50 odd percent. Right, now, 50,000 is not a million miles away. 50,000 is two right answers away. You have 10,000 pounds, John. You can obviously take that and walk away, which would not be a bad, probably seven or eight minutes' work um, at all. But, question number six, you could double your money here to 20,000 pounds, or you're two away from 50,000. You still have a 50-50, and you can phone a friend. Question number six for 20,000 pounds is this. Thus, with a kiss, I die. 
are the last words spoken by which Shakespearean character? King Lear, Othello, Romeo, Ophelia. Now, do you know your Shakespeare? I know some Shakespeare, and I'm leaning towards one particular name on there, but I don't know whether I know it well enough to go for it. Can I play my 50-50, please, on this one? You can. Computer, take away two random wrong answers. Leave John the right answer and the one remaining wrong answer. What's that done? It's still there. And again, based on the fact that I'm not sure if my phone of friends would know this, and the fact you only get a chance to sit here once, I'll play on this and I'm going to say Romeo. Final answer. Final answer. Not Lear. Put it this way, I hope not. You lose £9,000 if you're wrong. John. Yeah. We'll take a break. Join us again in a couple of minutes. Don't go away. Welcome back to the third part of tonight's Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, where John Harcourt is on the edge of his seat, wondering whether he's just lost £9,000 or won £20,000. Uh, the question was, thus with a kiss I die, are the last words spoken by which Shakespearean character? He had a 50-50. He did not use his phone a friend. He got rid of two. He was left with King Lear and Romeo, and he went for Romeo. John? You just won £20,000. <laughs> and you weren't sure, were you? Not completely, no. Oh. He, uh, he actually killed himself by drinking poison. It's never good, that, is it? <laughs> right, John's very happy now. He's got £20,000 so far. So How are you now? How are you feeling? Uh, quite pleased with the way things are going at the moment. Um, Still got the heart going about 200 to the, uh, to the minute, but other than that, I'm not fine enjoying it. Right. Question number seven is for £50,000. John, you do not have to play this. You can phone a friend, and if you're not happy, you can still take £20,000 away. You would lose nineteen grand if you gave me a wrong answer. Have a look. Question number seven, if you went for it and gave me the right answer, we'd guarantee you're going back to Gravesend in Kent with at least £50,000. World cruise, here we come. Right, let's have a look. Who does Anne Hathaway portray in the 2007 film Becoming Jane? Jane Austen, Jane Seymour, Calamity Jane, Lady Jane Grey. That's worth £50,000. I think I know the answer, but I don't want to rush into it without thinking about it. What's your inclination? As I said, I'm torn between two. I'm torn between um, Lady Jane Grey and Jane Austen. I'm okay. trying to get my head round which one of my phone of friends is most likely to, to know. Okay. I've got two that uh, are into films, but I'm not sure these are t this type of uh, classic is uh, either of their specialities. Who does Anne Hathaway portray in the 2007 film Becoming Jane for £50,000? Jane Austen, Jane Seymour, Calamity Jane or Lady Jane Grey? I'm going to phone a friend I'd like Nicola. Nicola, OK, where's she? Kent. She's in, no, yeah, she's in Kent. She's in a little village just outside Gravesend, and I'm hoping that her, our granddaughter is not awake, because this could get awkward. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, do you want me to tell us for fifty grand? No, thank you. Definitely not. Hello. Nicola. Hello. Chris Tarrant. Hello. How are you? 
I'm fine, thank you. You don't sound fine. Nicola, you sound a little bit worried. Oh, a little bit, but I'm fine. OK, well, you know what it means. It means John's here, John's doing well, he's in the chair, he's stuck on a particular question, he needs your help. Right, OK. All right, darling, fingers crossed. Next voice you hear will be John's. Okay. He'll tell you the question, there are still four possible answers. One, obviously, is the right answer, the one we want. OK. OK. John, fingers crossed, mate, you've got 30 seconds, your time starts now. Hello, Nick. Hello. Who does Anne Hathaway portray in the 2007 film Becoming Jane? Is it Jane Austen, Jane Seymour, Calamity Jane, or Lady Jane Grey? It's Jane Austen. Are you sure of that, Nick? Yes. Okay, Nick, thanks ever so much indeed. All the best to Katie. Okay, bye. Bye bye. <laughs> don't think I'll put her down as a don't know on that one. No, <laughs> she sounded quite yeah. totally confident. That was my leaning as well, so I'm going to go with Nick's inkling and I'm going to say the answer is Jane Austen. Final answer. Final answer. You just won £50,000. <laughs> Good bad. Good man, John Harcourt. Great to... phone a friend. I have to say, she was yeah. absolutely just what you want. No mucking yeah, about. Yeah. Confident, 100%. Yeah. There you are. Have a look. That's what you've done. Ooh, that We're looks going good. round the world. <laughs> that looks good. Yeah, that is the minimum amount okay. you will leave here with tonight. Yeah. It could be more, but you will go home with at least 50 fat ones. Thank you. It's brilliant. Now, you've got 50 grand, but. You might as well play the next question, John. You know, you cannot lose on this one anyway. You've got 50 grand guaranteed. You've got no more lifelines, but they certainly help get you this far. Have a look at question number eight. It's for £75,000. You are just five away from one million. Have a look at this. Question number eight of a possible 12. In which month of 1926 did Britain's general strike take place? January. March. May. July. Take your time. Even if you haven't a clue, you should play this. It's worth 75 grand. You can't lose money on it. I'm going to have a punt at it and say I can't lose anything. But I, I, I actually don't have a clue uh, which month it is. Again, I'm torn between two. Um, March seems to be leaping off the screen at me, so I shall go for March. Final answer. Yeah, final answer. You had fifty thousand pounds. <laughs> you still have fifty thousand pounds. I'm afraid the right answer was May. It's the other one. Yeah, you weren't far out actually. <laughs> but not bad, was it? Glad yeah. you came. Yeah, it's too right. Have a look at it. The big hand, he goes away with £50,000! Whatever, man, enjoy it. Have a good cruise. Cheers. Cheers. So, we still have nine millionaires in waiting, hoping to flash their fastest fingers. This time around, nice and quiet, please, in the audience. Here comes their next question. Put these Academy Award-winning films in the order they were first released. Crash, Gandhi, Casablanca, Gladiator. It's all those early smiles. They're all frowning now. Let's see. Let's see um, the right order, first and foremost. Um, Casablanca with Humphrey Bogart uh, back in 42. Then Gandhi, 1982, Gladiator. Russell Crowe, 2000, most recent crash in 2004. So that's the right order. Now we've got nine left. How many got it right out of nine? Quite a few. Who was fastest? Uh, Donna Higgins in 4.40 seconds. Come on, Donna, they just sit there. They just sit there smiling. <laughs> you have to go up here, but if you go up there, otherwise it won't work. So you're right now. Okay, move. Come on, be calm.
Uh, now we have Donna Higgins, a chartered surveyor from Wishaw in North Lanarkshire. Donna is currently planning and developing new houses for the high end of the market. She has her work cut out at home as well because she is a single mum to three boys, 12-year-old twins Dominic and Ronan and 7-year-old Eamon. Sister Andrea has come along to support her this evening, but apparently Andrea was more concerned about Donna's clothes and makeup for the show <laughs> than whether she actually knows anything. <laughs> Donna has just turned 40, she's quite proud of it, and she's hoping that the old adage is true and life will indeed begin again. If she does well on the show, she says she'd love to pay her mum and dad back for all the help and support they've given us since she became a single mum. Hope we can do it. 12 questions, three brand new lifelines, one million pounds. I think that would help quite a lot. Donna, lots of luck. Let's play. Who wants to be a millionaire? So, question number one is for 500 pounds. You have all three lifelines. Here we go. Which word is normally used to describe animals at risk of extinction? Jeopardised. Menaced, endangered, imperiled. Endangered. See, it's the right answer. Don't be worried. You've got five hundred pounds. <laughs> Nobody's ever, ever gone out on the first question. It has happened famously in America. Okay. Right. Question number two. We guarantee you one thousand pounds. You have all three lifelines, Donna. Here we go. Blackpool Tower is modelled on which other famous structure? Sears Tower, Empire State Building, Space Needle, Eiffel Tower. That's the Eiffel Tower. It's the right answer. You've got £1,000, Donna Higgins. Blackpool Tower is roughly half the height of the Eiffel Tower, but that's what the design was based on. Right, Donna Higgins has £1,000. She has all three lifelines intact. She's just ten away from a million. We'll take a break. Don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back to the final part of tonight's Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Just remind you again, if you're sitting at home watching other people on the show going, Kya! I could do better than that. Then come here and do better than that. Prove it. It's so easy to apply. Give us a call, 09068 444444. And before you know it, you could be facing me from the most sought-after seat in the land. Just like Donna Higgins here at the moment. She's on £1,000. She has all three lifelines untouched. Now, Donna, how are you feeling? Shocked. I'm sitting here, but delighted to be here. You've got £1,000. That's great. That's £1,000 more than I came with. Well, it is. What would you love to go home with? Of course you'd like a million. Fantastic if you do, but, but what would be realistic? <laughs> 50,000 would be fantastic. You've just seen that one before you've realised? I know that kind of inspired me a wee bit. Good. Are you inspired? OK, let's see. Question number three is for £2,000. You have all three lifelines untouched. Here we go. Complete the title of the song Midnight Train to... Georgia. Mississippi. Louisiana. Florida. That's E. Georgia. How do you know? Because I've got the album. Who by? Can't remember, but I have it in my collection. It's been a long time since it's been played because it's on vinyl. Final answer? Yeah. It's the right answer. <laughs> when you look at your old vinyl album <laughs> cover, I bet you it says Gladys Knight. That is Gladys Knight. My mum's called Gladys. Is she? Yeah. So are you one of her pips? I'm one of her pips. Of her the pips. other one's sitting up there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. That is not the two pips. You have £2,000. Question number four is for 5000 As what is Thierry Mugler most famous? Fashion designer, philosopher, footballer, poet. What are you thinking, Donna? I'm thinking fashion designer. Thierry Moogler. Fashion designer, philosopher, footballer, poet. I think it's Thierry Moogler and I think he does handbags. Why are you looking at me like that? Because I'm hoping that you're going <laughs> to give me inspiration. No. Um, I never do. you got £2,000, you're playing for five. Right, I'm going to go 50-50. Right. Computer take away two random wrong answers. Leave Donna the right answer and the one remaining wrong answer. 
Right, it's a fashion designer. Final answer. That's my final answer. It's the right answer. You got five thousand pounds. Wishing now. Yourself all the way home. <laughs> wishing now you hadn't wasted a lifeline, but it made you sure double sure and you got the money. You still got two lifelines and you're three away from 50,000. Question number five you could double your money here to 10,000 pounds. Here it comes. How many squares are there in a standard Sudoku puzzle? 49, 64, 81, 100. I have no idea. Do you not do it? Are you not I a don't puzzler? do it. My mum does it all the time. And I'm not really a puzzler. So I'm going to ask the audience because okay. I would be guessing. Yeah, yeah. Right, audience. I think they might know this. This is the question. It's for £10,000. How many squares are there in a standard Sudoku puzzle? A on your keypad is 49, B is 64, C is 81. D is 100. A, B, C or D, please all vote now. Eighty percent. Saying 81. Well, I've got to go see 81 with the audience. I haven't got to. Well, I do because it's really popular. It's just that number games like that don't interest me, so I have had no interest don't in it. interest your mum. Gladys. Interest my mum. My mum. My mum loves that and crossword puzzles. Okay. Final answer. That's my final answer. It's the right answer. Eighty percent are right. You've got ten thousand pounds. <laughs> you have ten thousand pounds. Question number six. You could double your money for twenty thousand. You still have a phone, a friend. Here it comes. Which actor won a Tony Award in 2006 for his performance in Alan Bennett's play, The History Boys? Richard Wilson, Richard Briers, Richard E. Grant, Richard Griffiths. I really don't know. I think I'm going to phone Catherine. Who's she? She's a friend. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's what it's called. How, do, how do I know her? Well... She bought one of my houses. Oh, she's a customer? Mm-hmm. Client. Is she happy with her purchase? I think so, yeah. Mm -hmm. OK, we're in Catherine. Uh, tell her the question, four possible answers. I hope she knows it. I hope she knows it too. Hello? Catherine? Yeah? Chris Tarrant, good evening. Good evening. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. You sound a bit, um, a bit quaky in your voice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Well, now, serious business. Donna's here. She's doing OK. She's in the chair. Oh, that's fantastic. But she's stuck on a question. She hopes you can help her. I hope so. Uh, Catherine, she's got £10,000 at this moment, so you're trying to help her win 20000 Great. Serious business. OK. Yep. Next one's here will be Donna's. She'll tell you the question. There are four possible answers. One of these is worth... £20,000. OK. Donna, fingers crossed, your time starts now. Thanks. Hi. Which actor won a Tony Award in 2006 for his performance in Alan Bennett's play The History Boys? Was it Richard Wilson, Richard Briers, Richard E. Grant or Richard Griffiths? R Richard Griffiths. Right, you sure, Catherine? I'm 99% sure. Right, that's great. Thank you very much. Okay, good luck, Donna. Thanks, bye. Good luck. Bye. Um, it's your call. You've got £10,000. She did sound very confident. Right. D. Richard Griffiths. That's my final answer. Even though you haven't got a clue. No, I haven't. <laughs> I tell you now, you know... Don't look, but you know Andrea? She crying? She quite bright? Yeah. Brighter than you? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, she thinks the answer is Richard E. Grant. Yeah, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> I tell you what, it's good thing Andrea was not your phone a friend. Richard Griffiths is the right answer. You got twenty thousand pounds. That's why I brought her with me. What? 
That's why I brought her with me. So you didn't have to use her as phone a friend? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, right, now, this is getting a bit serious now, cos you've got no lifelines left. Yep. You want 50,000, but, hey... I'm going to know does. the next one, though. Eh? I've had ones that I don't know. I'm going to know the next one. Right, have a look at question number seven of a possible 12. This is £50,000. Here it comes. Which poet stated that no man is an island? William Wordsworth, John Keats, Elizabeth Barrett Browning, John Donne. That's worth £50,000. I know, and I'm, I don't think that I'm sure enough to plump for anything. Do you know what? I could stare at that all night and I'm not going to know it, I think. I think I have an inkling of what it is, but I'm not sure enough to risk £20,000 for it. What's your inkling? What are you thinking? I don't know who John Dunn is. So it might be him. I don't know. It's not Keats, I don't think. I don't think it's Elizabeth Barrett Browning. And the only other one is Wordsworth. But I can't. It's not worth gambling £20,000 on. Which poet stated that no man is an island? William Wordsworth, John Keats, Elizabeth Barrett Browning, John Duff. No, I'm not going to gamble it, Chris. I'm going to take the 20,000 and be delighted with the lovely day that I've had. You've had a lovely day. I have had a great day. <laughs> final answer. A final answer is take the cash. OK, give her a big hand. I think we're all quite relieved. She goes away. She goes away with £20,000. Go on, then. Which one will you got? Come on. Come on, Donna. If we were playing for 500 quid, which one are you gone for? Um, Wordsworth. Ooh! <laughs> if you'd said William Wordsworth, you would no longer have £20,000. Mm -hmm. I would have replaced it with £1,000 and taken 19 away. The right answer is the one you said, oh, I've never heard of him. John Dunn. John I Dunn. I, I knew that because I, I can think of... <laughs> like, I can think of poems that the other ones have written and I haven't heard of John Dunn. I've heard that, but I don't know the poem that that comes from, so I had no context for it. Well, you did the right thing, then. I did the right thing. Give her a big hand. She goes away with £20,000. And I'm afraid that's all we've got time for. It's been a great night earlier on. Maxine Morris returned from last time with her £5,000. She doubled it to ten grand. John Harcourt then guaranteed himself and his wife the world cruise with a very welcome £50,000. And Donna Higgins here ends delighted with £20,000. Uh, a Donna here who's still smiling and everybody on who wants to be a millionaire. Good night. We won twenty grand. Well, next here on ITV1, a look into the strange things people get up to in their sleep. It's Sleepwalkers, Secrets of the Night. Everything's fallen into place for our favourite singleton, or has it? Bridget Jones, The Edge of Reason is next on ITV2, and Sharp's Challenge is a visit to India. It's next on ITV3.